Joining us now is Ojinik Ojiokwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Ojinik. You know, I get those comments. It's Friday. Joining us now. <laughs> yes, it's Friday. It's my best day of the week. How are you this morning? I get those comments all the time. You're just legendary. Good morning, Ayo. How morning. are you, beautiful? Perfect. Good morning, <clears throat> Rufai. Oro. <laughs> <laughs> you and your Oro Festival. We have a long chat. Eh? Yes, to probe him. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, it's not funny, actually. No, a, wo a woman it's, cannot it's... be Oro. Mm. Mm. No, so, I, wait, it's a I, know, I think he was just mentioning the festival, the argument yeah. we had about the no, festival. You know why I mentioned Oro? Yes, tell because me. Because people have now started doing it in the afternoon. As we speak, there's also an Egungu festival going on around Jakondi, which is wrong to scare people. Unacceptable. So I might talk about it in a funny way, but it is wrong what is going on now. And the that security authorities right. have not been able to stop it or nip it in the bud. Absolutely this is wrong. unacceptable. Well... I hope we get a good but Friday and a good election tomorrow. is usually in the afternoon yeah. anyway. But anyway, I yeah. am using it for political purposes. Is That's what is wrong. Is yeah. what is deplorable, yes. Yes. condemnable. We do not accept uh, Oru, Oru. If Oru, Oru comes out in the afternoon, no. uh, that would be funny. Absolutely. Except there is a major crisis in the uh, community. Absolutely. Well, all right. Happy Friday to you, viewers. And good morning. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In Nigeria, one day to the governorship and House of Assembly elections, civil society organizations have called on the Independent National Electoral Commission to deliver free, fair, and credible elections in the wake of the controversial presidential election and declaration of Bola Ahmed Tinubu as president-elect. The Presidential Campaign Council of the All Progressives Congress in a meeting on Thursday said, contrary to claims by the opposition, the presidential election was transparent and it is unfair for a section of the media to describe the election as fraudulent. We made bold to say that the 2023 presidential election is the most credible, most free, most fair national election in Nigeria since 1999. In Iran, a group of teen girls who shared a video dancing to Nigerian Afrobeat star Remus Calm Down were reportedly detained by Iranian forces and pressured into apologizing for the act. The dance video released last Wednesday on International Women's Day went viral on social media. The women were seen without headscarves, which is required for all females in the country. Baby, calm down. On a sports, Gianni Infantino has been re-elected, unopposed as FIFA president for another four-year term in office. The election took place at the FIFA Congress held in Kigali, Rwanda on Thursday and Infantino won by acclamation since no formal vote was required as there were no opposing candidates. His new term will run from 2023 to 2027. Under entertainment, DJ Kapi, daughter of Nigerian billionaire businessman, Femi Otedola sets social media buzz after posting photos announcing that she has bagged her third degree and second masters from the University of Oxford in the United Kingdom. The 30-year-old DJ who has been celebrated as one of the pioneer female DJs out of Africa is known for her unique sound which she describes as neo Afrobeats. Her graduation ceremony was held at the Sheldonian Theatre in Oxford and was attended by her parents, family members, and her fiance, Ryan Taylor. Finally, Nigerian Grammy Award winning Afrofusion star. Bonaboy is set to co-headline the highly anticipated 2023 UEFA Champions League final kickoff show in Istanbul, Turkey. UEFA made the announcement on its official Twitter page, urging fans to tune in to watch the must-see performance at Istanbul's Atatürk Olympic Stadium on June 10, 2023. Hello everyone, this is Bernard Boy, and I've got some big news. I'll be performing at the UEFA Champions League final kickoff show by Pepsi. And you can get involved 
If you have ball skills like Leah or dance skills like Vinny, come on, let's go! Well, let's begin what's trending. In the wake of conversations surrounding the heritage of candidates in the gubernatorial election in Lagos State, the chairman of the Lagos State Parks Management Committee, Musiliu Akinsoya, also known as MCO Luomo, in a viral video on Thursday, warned Igbos in the state who will not vote for the All Progressives Congress to stay at home on Election Day. MCO Luomo made the comment while addressing supporters of the APC at a meeting. He also condemned Igbos, stating that if any one of them becomes governor, they would use offsprings of the Yorubas for ritual purposes. Let's take a look before we come back for a discussion. <laughs> Please, if you don't want to wait for us, please, sit down for a while. If you don't want to sit down for a while, I'll tell you, you know, to me, I'll keep very much. I can't get to my safety, I can't get to my safety. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say, why not? Can I make you two say, if it's in one, and if I do not see that, This has caused a lot of outrage. I'll take some reactions. Um, this is from Agaji, who wrote, If anything happens to the good people of Lagos State and voters that intend to vote out bad governance, MC Oluomo should be held responsible and the governor. It is disheartening that the Nigerian police and the DSS will see this and turn a blind eye. Security should be beefed up at polling units. Well, another tweet there goes, the Igbos are being disrespected and provoked unnecessarily. The security apparatus will be held responsible should anything happen to the Igbos in Lagos. The footprints are all over the state. Well, Joseph wrote, nobody is above the law. Why is this man allowed to freely threaten people and nothing is done? We were promised free, fair election by this government. Is this election free and fair? Well, in the meantime, many people were injured, others robbed, and property destroyed when thugs suspected to be working for the All Progressives Congress attacked supporters of the Labour Party in Suruleri. Let's take a look. This is Bodeta Mans Junction, where we are about going out for our rally. The area boys came, fought everybody, attacked, attacking everybody. They were armed with weapons. government to disrupt every movement by Labour Party. Look at the woman. They serve people, some people are a lot of people. 
Tomorrow is election day, Dr. Abati, and we are beginning to see this type of threat happening in Lagos State. This is completely unacceptable. I thought to highlight this story to call attention to the authorities. Dr. Abati. Well, you have this reign of impunity. Some persons projecting themselves as if they are above the law because of the failure of the Nigerian state to enforce its own laws. You ask the question, what has given uh, Musili Wakin Sonya, that's his name, popularly known as MC Uduomo, the confidence to engage in that kind of ethnic profiling, promotion of hate speech, intimidation, issuing threats at a public forum, and then he does so confidently, and as we sit here, nobody has heard that he has been picked up by the security agencies to come and explain exactly what gives him the audacity to threaten Igbos in Lagos. He is the Lagos State uh, Parks uh, Management Committee chairman. Okay? So he can, he, he's also, in a way, guilty of inciting people to violence and hate. And there is an enabling law for this election, the Electoral Act 2022. Section 128 of it says you cannot threaten people in this election. If you do it in any form, you are entitled to uh, 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 a fine of 100,000 or imprisonment for three years. Section 127 talks about undue influence. So it's uh, on the surface of it, by this evidence, maybe provided by a citizen, you know, journalist at the event, he has already indicted himself. But will anybody touch him? Will he, is he not untouchable in the eyes of the law? To tell Igbos, Mama Chukudi, not to come out to come and vote. Mama Chukudi, Mama Chinedu, they are all, you know, citizens of Nigeria. They have the right to vote. So for anybody to intimidate them and say you must not come out, something will happen to you is wrong. And why profile Igbos to say if an Igbo man becomes governor in Lagos State, uh, if your children go to school, they will slap them. If they go to the market, they will harass the girls. And uh, uh, they may even use your children for rituals. Unacceptable. In a, in a state that oh, has a government. Acceptable. Ah, this is uh, something else. Yes. Beyond this, the second uh, video, which also made the rounds yesterday. LP supporters being attacked by thugs, prevented from going to, you know, do their last minute campaigns. And nobody, up to this moment, we have not heard that anybody had been arrested. There was theft, there was violence, there was intimidation, there was uh, harassment. The suspicion is that tomorrow may even be a more violent day in Lagos. And that is why the security agencies must be reminded that they have their work cut out for them. The, the security agencies that will be on the ground tomorrow should see incidents like this as a wake-up call. And it is not too late yet to, to call uh, MC Oluomo and his uh, supporters to order that nobody to arrest either Mama Chinedu or Mama uh, Osabonye tomorrow Absolutely. because they want to vote in Lagos where they live, where they pay tax, and where they, they, are, they are legitimate citizens yeah. who should be part of this. All we are calling for is free, fair, and credible elections. I mean, we have seen many reports. The latest is uh, um, a young woman named Amarachi Amadi. I got, you know, um, news that she actually died after she found out that the Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi did not win the election. If you can pull up her picture, I just thought I should highlight the story. She starved herself to death. This was just completely unacceptable. We need to make sure that our Nigerians are safe. This is such a, a really sad story. Well, we'll take another story. There's been an update on the story of the schoolgirl from Odomola Junior Secondary School who was sent home from school for wrapping her school books with a poster of the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi. The principal of the school allegedly sent the student, Miss Marvelous, home to campaign for Peter Obi against the wish of Lagosians. Well, a video now circulating on social media revealed that the schoolgirl was allegedly selling the posters to her fellow students for 50 naira. Let's take a look. So this is what you want to learn this morning, Abi. Let me see your own. Let me see what. Let me see what you are ramping with. Who gave it to you? Huh? She gave it to you free. 
Then how did you get it from her? Huh? How much? Selling post at 15 era in the school. Hey! Well, I know they finish. Let me see your own. Who gave you? Marvelous. Huh? Marvelous. Marvelous. She gave you free. I buy it. You bought it. How much? 15 naira. 15 so who gave it to you? Let me see your face. Don't cover your face. Huh? Marvelous. Marvelous gave it to you. She dash you free. You bought it for how much? Six fifteen. She sold six for fifteen naira to you. How much? Well, I thought it was important to um, highlight both sides of the story. I mean, there will be more to come with the investigation that the you know, Ministry of Education is conducting at the moment. But Rafai, I believe you I mean, have your one, view. For the sake of balance, but yes. two things, I want us to forensically analyze that video. Mm -hmm. If that video was released after the incident, could it be that students were coerced to do that video? And I know why I said that, because that video was released after the incident. Secondly, it doesn't negate what was said earlier on. What was said earlier on was that this child should go home because of her support for Peter Obi. Against the wish of, of the Lagosians. So how do they yeah. know the wish of Lagosians exactly. in the first place? And secondly, let's be very truthful to ourselves in this country. Doing this also violates the Child Rights Act of privacy of those children. To be able to prove a point, what are our educational system even becoming in the first place? And if the child brought a poster to school, had the Peter B election not finished before the child brought the poster to school? Exactly. We should also ask, ask okay, where did the child get it? All right? But the Peter B election had finished, so it was of no effect in the first place. That's why I say, let's forensically analyze the video in the first place for the sake of balance. When we forensically analyze the video, then blames can go round. But as far as I'm concerned, nobody should try to hoodwink us away from the fact that what was said against the will of Lagosians, I think the principal needs to tell us the electoral will of Lagosians, since the principal knows the will of Lagosians in this. And we should stop bringing children into politics, because this is another case of violating the rights of those children into politics. Absolutely. I saw how the posters were even spread across board, or every children have it and everything. For, this is not in defense of Marvelous. But let's stop bringing children into politics in the first place. Because if we want to balance this out, there was an assembly hall where a principal told everybody to go and vote a certain party. Mm. All right, let's talk more on child rights. I would love for you to discuss both stories as well. We'll take our final story. A recent wedding ceremony in Kano State has sparked nationwide debate and calls for legal reform as a video of a 60-year-old man marrying an alleged 11-year-old girl went viral on social media. The groom, identified as a local Kano Alaji, has defended his actions, claiming that the marriage was born out of mutual consent. Child marriage remains a contentious issue in Nigeria, where regional disparities and cultural practices have long perpetrated the tradition. The viral video has reignited discussions around child protection, consent, and the need for a unified legal framework in Nigeria, and calls for authorities to investigate this matter. Ayo, I believe you have other reports concerning the story as well. Yes, so there's, there, there have been arguments or perhaps debates as to the age of the child. In one report, um, the, the suspicion is that she's a lot older than what people had said. Um, some people had said she was over 20, but in the same vein, please, can you just show the video again? You can see the face of the girl. I, I mean, like the commissioner of police in Kano State, nowadays you cannot tell the age of a human being just by looking at them because they might be stunted <laughs> growth. But, yes. that, I mean, because but this is a serious issue, yes. but because that's how we bring up very unrealistic um, statements for very serious things. This child marriage, this is, not the, this is not the first time, the second girl, or perhaps the last girl, unfortunately, who will be subjected to child marriage. It is the look on the man's face of satisfaction and perhaps his lack of understanding of the impact of what this is. In Nigeria, the statutory age of marriage is 18 years. However, statistics reveal that child marriage is prevalent in the northwest and in, no in the northeast. In fact, Nigeria has one of the highest numbers of girls who get married before 18 in the world. We are, we are top 20. And in terms of the numbers of under 18 girls who get married, we are number three in the world. Nigeria, in terms of legislation, 
is, has ratified the Convention on the Rights of a Child of 1991. And we have also signed up to the Sustainable Development Goals, um, one of which is to end child marriage, forced marriage by 2030. When we see things like this, it speaks to some of the other things we've talked about on this show this morning with regards to impunity because of the lack of enforcement of the law. So I understand that there have been debates around the ratification and the adoption by individual states in Nigeria. However, there, there have been research around the health impact, the economic impact of child marriages, especially girls forced against their wish to get married to much older men. On a very, on, on, a, on a normal, on a human side, I don't understand the pleasure that an older man like that would get from a young girl who does not even know her left from her right. It is, it, it boggles the mind of sane people. But let me not put it in, let me not um, be so extreme because I know that it's a debate that has run for so long, but I think it's time for the Nigerian state to begin to protect its children, to begin to protect, protect its girls as well. Absolutely. Well. I wish we had more time on what's trending today, but you know, you hit the nail on the head. Um, we have to protect our children. Well, thank you all for your great analysis, as always, on what's trending. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all next week.